Hey everyone, this is Dusko Makai's Fat Gamer. Occasionally, I think every Let's Player has an LP they do, at least one, that they completely hate themselves for. Maybe not hate themselves, maybe hate's too strong of a word here, but an LP they've done that they really dislike. And if they ever had a chance to, they wish they would have never done it. Sure, you can delete a video or delete the videos, but I really don't think that helps solve anything, if that makes any, if it makes any sense. I think it's good to sort of live up to things that you may personally view as mistakes and sort of just pick yourself up from them and continue going. For me, that LP for me has been Silent Hill Homecoming. I did the LP like two years ago. It was one of the first LPs I did with my HDP VR, and I believe the first one I did that was commentated. And it's one of the LPs I regret doing the most out of any LP I've ever done. We'll watch the opening here because Josh. you know it's cool and all. Don't let me fall. Ah, uh, still though. <clears throat> I've it's Halloween, it's October horror fest for me, and I decided, you know, I might as well take this opportunity to replay through Silent Hill Homecoming. Now, in retrospective, Silent Hill Homecoming is quite possibly out of all the Silent Hill games my least favorite that I've played. Especially after Downpour. I like Downpour much more than I enjoyed Homecoming, though there are a few elements about Homecoming that I can still sort of remember fondly to this day. Still though, uh, there will be a few things about this Let's Play. First of all, this will be commentated if you can't tell by me talking already. And I'm not going to be apologetic through all of this, this is just the beginning really where I'm trying to lay clear why I'm playing through this game again. Uh, this will, unfortunately, go with my weird odd sense of humor, and I will be talking through the cutscenes this time. I believe I tried avoid it. I tried avoiding talking through cutscenes in my last Let's Play. This one will have talking all throughout, just opinion, opinion, opinion. And as well, if you're wondering about other Silent Hill Let's Plays, like where's the progress on Silent Hill One, Four, and Two, those will be coming later this month too. And with all that cleared up, we're finally starting to get started. Uh, for stars, I love the opening theme of Silent Hill Homecoming here. It is a really catchy song. Unfortunately, this is a reminder that Mary no longer works in the series, really. She did help a little bit on Downpour and Book of Memories, but will she continue after that? No clue. Then again, the what ifs of where the series is going to go after this is going to be a huge thing. Silent Hill Downpour was the lowest rated Silent Hill game critically, which I don't believe it deserved at all, earnestly speaking. I felt that was I'll the best post-team Silent Silent Hill game, and I loved it, but unfortunately it was very panned. It's not perfect, definitely. I could talk about that some other time, but for now it's time for Homecoming. Uh, now, for starters, the well, we're going to start immediately. I like Alex as a main character. Uh, I don't believe that, since uh, this is on a different HDD, I don't believe this has a Silent Hill Homecoming save file on it. So I'm going to probably have to start all over, yep, as I expected. So, uh, let's get off of options and all that with display and audio. It's actually a little bit dark, so I'm going to turn that a little bit up, uh, turn all that up all the way. Radio volume a little bit less, I suppose. Sound effect volume, okay, we're good, we're good. Game options, very day, nope, subtitles on, vibrations on, there we go. Button config, don't care. New game. Choose our good old storage device, and with this, we can get straight on the go. Now, normal, normal difficulty on monsters and ammo are set to default values. On hard difficulty, the monsters are tougher, hit harder, and there is less ammo available in the world. Now, last time I played Silent Hill Homecoming on normal difficulty, so just to give myself a bit more challenge, I might as well try it hard. I recall I ended up with a lot of health drinks and ammo at the end of the game anyway, so there's gonna probably be a few spots where I have difficulty a bit much. Uh, just brightness to your left behind the TV because blends going in the background and the bar is visible. Okay, I guess that is a good enough level. Good, good enough for me. Okay, light attacks will not stun enemies. Use heavy attacks and counters to stun them quickly. We're gonna get the same piece of advice over and over again. Now, as we see this, the subtitles are trying to tell us there's air raid strikes, all that fun stuff. But that's not what's really important going on, because Alex what? awakens up and he's wondering where are the, all the army stuff. Where am I, man? 
Now, this movie was really... movie. <laughs> this game was really heavily inspired by the first Silent Hill movie. It's seen everywhere from sort of how all the characters act to the schematics, like how the whole movie just looks. And to the monster design, to... It's just this... just screams the first Silent Hill movie. And here comes one of the first things that is wrong with the game. Right off the bat, we see a normal person go get stabbed to death. And a QTE to start our gameplay off, because you know that's fun for gamers. Love them QTEs, don't we? And uh, for anyone who plays Silent Hill games, it's obvious that Lon soars from Pyramid Head, which is one of the first big issues, because Pyramid Head was only supposed to be part of James's mentality. It was only because of his popularity that he started popping up everywhere. That was way too dark. Uh, let's see. Turn down. I mean, I need to turn up the brightness, maybe a little bit. Okay, uh, let's see how that looks. Okay, slightly better. Uh, all the same, what they want us to do is run around, press X to access our menu or whatnot. I forget what they want us to do here, to be exact. Wow, this is darker than I remember it being. Like tremendously darker. Uh, I'm not gonna be taking time to explore everything this time. I've already done that before, so we're just gonna go straight on in here. There's a few little nice details, like as we see, there's a pool of blood here where we saw a sword being stabbed into the bottom of wherever this guy was going. Uh, where the? I guess there's a door here. Is it bad? I really can't see worth anything right now. You know what? You know what? What, what the fuck? Man, I'm supposed to get a flashlight. This is way, way, way too dark. Josh, Josh, is that you? Well, I guess we somehow found Josh. Oh, there we go. There's our flashlight. Okay, I was wondering where that was. Flashlight is too helpful. Uh, as we see, this door is closed, meaning that we cannot potentially ever get in there. Uh, well, it's, it's a bit more sensible. That's where we came from, so we need to find the number code for that somewhere else. Looks like the lock's broken, so we need to find another door. Apparently this was it. Here we see a uh, picture here. It's only a scratch on the surface of the x-ray. Next, 624. Uh, inventory. Flashlight radio. I don't have any maps available, but it says that Y was my radio, and then apparently that's my inventory, whatever. And it was obviously number 624 are important, but we need to find the other half of that rib cage, if I remember correctly. So, exploration, we'll take the map here. It's a map of the hospital. Look, keypad, nurse center, mystery, question mark, and other options. Yep, that's what we wanted today. Press Y to access your map. Press X to display the objective screen. Well, of course, game. Uh, let's see, I, I don't believe we can go through here yet. Oh, yes, we can. It was that way we couldn't go. Now, this is the desolate hallway, which has a guy hanging from there. He's gonna have a jump scare for us later, because, of course, we everyone loves jump scares. Exactly what Silent Hill needed. Jump scares. Right, guys? That's what you think of when you think of psychological horror. You'll hear babies crying. That's one whiny baby, all I have to say. A uh, page from an incident report. The patient proceeds to leap through the window and then ravage the adjacent room. The patient was not responsive to verbal commands. Three staff members eventually subdued the patient. The, uh, the patient entered a catonic state and stopped responding to outside stimuli. Restraints were unnecessary during the following week's electric shock therapy sessions. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, still, though, what could be causing the baby to cry? Nothing in here. Ooh. A child's doll. It appears to be burned. Next, I wonder how it got here. It was just there to make a baby cry noise to creep you out. Oh, so scary. Now in here, I believe, is the other x-ray. Take the x-ray film. Will do. I wonder what this puzzle could be about. It's not like we're supposed to take that x-ray film back to back to the room with the x-ray. Magazines and all that. Though this door is closed. Better hop right on back over. We are physically incapable of doing things for ourselves. We'll be back here later in Nightmare World, as I like to call it. Anyways, get ready for the jump scare, the one part of the game that might be considered scary. If you're fucking weak, it's gonna be like, la, 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 la. oh my god, body about to jump out. Oh, oh my! Yeah, yeah, that's their idea of what's scary these days. Oh my god, a headless, deformed man, he jumped out of the ceiling. His feet are clipping through the wall, or ceiling. That's what's really terrifying about this one. Uh, still all the same. What you're supposed to do is get the x-ray onto this here, x-ray thing, something that scratches the surface x-ray film next, go into your inventory, find the other piece of x-ray, which 
for some reason I am not seeing. Oh, yeah, you go over to this side. Uh, yeah, I'm not. There we go. X-ray film. Put it there. Full combination is six two four eight seven two six two four eight seven two six. I'll never forget that. I just know I am six two four eight seven eight. Okay, it's eight. It's eight. Six two four eight seven 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 eight. Then we go six two four eight seven eight. Which apparently I was wrong about. Was it seven? What was it? What was it? Six two four. Oh, it says at the bottom. It was a two. Six two four eight seven two. Six two four eight seven two. Six two four eight seven two. Okay, uh, let's clear it. Then we go six two four eight seven two. And this door opens. And Josh is a little bitch and runs away. Josh, where are you going? That's the real question here. Fucking bitch, I hate Josh with so much passion, it's almost ridiculous. I actually don't mind, Alex. Fucking Josh, I hate him. Look at him, just fucking drawing three little pigs. Why is one of the pigs bigger than the other one, huh? I'm trying to suggest something here. Anyways, uh, besides that, this door will be locked. Oh no, we heard doors opening. That's so scary. Okay, lock is broken. We got uh, two potential doors to go through. I believe this is the right one. Yep, this is the restroom. Josh! Stop! Josh, wait! I need to stand still as I yell at you. Anyways, we hear some creepy noises. What's causing it is that there's a lot of insects inside one of these. Look, they got all these little cockroaches all running around. Actually, I'm not even sure those are cockroaches. They might be spiders. But there's some form of insect that are just eating the insides of this guy, because that's a pleasant thought process. Look at them all. Get all over my body. All over it. That's what that, that's what Alex here does in his free time. He just enjoys the company of insects. Now we could save here, but nope, we don't care. Actually, we should probably save because maybe I'll lose in the combat. That's a good point, me. Uh, okay, so we save here, and now we're about to experience the game in a whole new perspective. And by whole new perspective, I mean everything's gonna go all orange and shit, and that makes a big difference. Now that was one thing which I thought Downpour was missing while we're talking about the future of the series. I thought that the overworlds or other worlds could, why well, I say overworlds, the other worlds could use a little bit more work, but still, homecomings aren't much better. I mean, they're kind of more... Uh, not too interesting to be honest. So we take the knife, and picking up the knife apparently transforms the world into a nightmare! Yep. This was of course very important. The knife was essential to everything. And, uh, earnestly, it just turns to the other world because you got a weapon. The knife has no importance to the story at all. There's no reason for this to alter in other world. It doesn't remind Alex of anything that happened to him. We just have a nurse also who's wearing the skimpiest outfit the nurses have ever worn, ever, and now we have to beat the living crap out of her. Now, nurses are actually one of the toughest enemies in the game, which I always thought was extremely weird. However, though, I think that they're fine to do one-on-one -on -one because you see this, this enemy isn't getting a chance to attack me. I'm just fucking stabbing it to death, and now it's dead, and... There was a kind of a cool mechanic as well in Silent Hill uh, Downpour, where depending if you killed enemies or not, you get a different ending. And this doesn't make a difference. Just kill everything or run. Doesn't doesn't really matter. As long as you can survive, that's all that's important. How do you how do you roll? I need to remember that. That's how you stab. Uh, is it B? Is B roll? Yeah, B is dodge. That's gonna be very important to remember. Combat kind of makes me think of a Zelda game. It always has. Uh, we squeeze right through here as we find out that the whole world has become rooted. I never got the purpose of these roots. Are they supposed to be like veins? Are they some really important symbolic thing? I'm just not just standing there. They're probably just there a little creepy and they were in the movie too, so whatever. We got first aid kit. We got nothing really else to matter. Um, uh, so there's this whole mechanic in this game where if you turn your light on or off, it'll have different effects. However, I don't think it makes a big difference. I mean, honestly, why even avoid the combat? Most of the game takes place in really small corridors where you can't really avoid the enemies anyway. There's only a few select areas where this really makes a big difference. Most enemies will spot you anyway because you have to literally squeeze and right past them to get through. It's not really much of a stealth element here, even though the game does at least attempt to try. It just doesn't really pull it off too well. Now, were there two different paths here? Nope. Or was there? Nope. Because in this game, everything's broken everywhere. I believe this is the right way anyway. Nope. Yes, my memory was wrong. Okay, is it this door? Nope. Because why would that be the door? That means it has to be this one. 
Here we go. Oh, yeah, okay. I was wondering, I was like, what was that? I thought for a second it was, uh, like, one of the nurses. But nope, it's just a wheelchair, which is kind of funny, because wheelchairs play a big role in the next Silent Hill game, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Here we have valves, and over up ahead is going to be one of the more difficult rooms, because here we go, here we go, this is, this is about it. Right through there, right through there, there's going to be a ton of nurses. And I hate this room so much, because it is so cheap, because nurses... I told you, I mentioned this earlier, they're one of the cheapest enemies in this game. They're like the first enemy you encounter, but so many enemies are so easy to take care of just with your default knife, because it's too fast to take care of for anything to really hit you. There's a few enemies you need to watch out for, once you get their attack patterns down, it's easy as pie. Now, some, now there's some pros and cons to this type of combat system. On one side of things, you know, it's nice to have a little bit of depth to your combat, but it's really easy depth. It makes me think of Zelda combat system. Not really much else to say. Uh, regardless, though, I mean, I forget if you have to break through there. There we go. They're all in there. This door's gonna be locked, I already know that. I kinda wanna run through here, but I know those nurses follow you around for a while if you just leave them. They have this sort of adjacent thing. Now, this is supposed to be one of those rooms where I could be all secretive and sneak through with turn off my light and my radio, but earnestly, I don't give a fuck. I know they're all through here, and besides, they hear you when you break through the window anyway. Why make a stealth element if all the enemies are going to hear you the moment you break through the window? That makes no sense to me. I'm going to break it anyway. Come here, you bitches. Seriously, I'm waiting for them. Because I know they're all in there. If I hop over, there's a big chance I might die. I've not played this game on hard difficulty before. And I'm expecting if they can kill me really easily on normal difficulty, they can probably rape me to death on hard. And there's at least, I mean, you can see one of them right now to the left. You can see that little flicker in the light. And the moment I jump in there, probably they're going to charge me from all directions. I'm going to be stabbed at death because just, they have knives too. I was telling you how knives are one of the cheapest weapons in this game is Alex. The reason why the nurses are so cheap is because they have knives. In this game, knives are the cheapest weapon because they are so fast. They might be the weakest damage-wise. It doesn't make a difference if essentially for every one hit you get with another weapon, you get three hits in with a knife, and the knife stuns both you and the enemies. Which is why the nurses remain one of the toughest enemies in this game, simply because they, are, well, they take lots. And essentially, it's a best if whoever gets to you first. Do I get her first, or does she get me first? I'm afraid one of the sisters are going to sneak up on me while I'm doing this. But I think, hey, there we go, there we go, there we go. I need to make sure I get her before the other one gets me. We're going to have a fucking sword fight here, raping us nurses and all that, because if she stabs me with her knife, I will lose. If I stab her first, she will lose. Okay, there was only two of them in there. For some reason, I was remembering three. Uh, here we have Mr... I don't want to question how he lived his life. TV is all staticky, because that's all mysterious, and not like every other horror game ever does that. Seriously. Static TVs and all that. It's so overdone. It doesn't even mean anything anymore. Now, given that TVs can be quite creepy, but they never really use them to the fullest of horror games, I've noticed. Anyways, now we have some creepy, fleshy-looking thing as we have another button-mashing fest. We'll open that right up, and it looks like the jaws of the inert creature. I also left a little blood mark on our screen, which I always thought was a nice little effect. Uh, we squeeze right through, though, because this is obviously an intelligent idea. And we have more roots. We have more growing stuff. Ooh, it looks like to read. She's not here. 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 She's obviously not here. I, I, I don't get what... Th that's just one of those notes that are there spook you out because honestly women in this game there's only like one woman that's important to this game okay maybe two but they're not they're not very important the whole game is really focused around josh and his little brother and i guess his family but i earnestly his dad maybe his mom doesn't really do much of anything doesn't really matter for much of anything so yep it's one of those additional things that aren't really needed, but I'll admit I like some of the cast of Homecoming. I'm just kind of being hard on it right now, because I feel like Homecoming could have been so much better if I'd done some things differently. Okay, here we go. I think this is when we meet the insect enemies. These were a bitch the first time we got here, so it must be a bitch on higher difficulties. I can only imagine. Here they are. I, 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 it's just best if I run past this part. These things will scatter all over you pretty quickly if you're not careful. Uh, they're not that difficult one-on-one, -on -one, but in swarms, they can be pretty bitchy. They uh, swarm all over through you. Yeah, and they do this. And they eat you, because apparently that's what they like doing. And apparently that's what Silent Hill monsters want to do. They want to eat you. Where's the deep symbolism psychologicalness of this now game? 
represents fear of insects. Yeah, that's so deep, man. So deep, I can never imagine another game doing anything deep like that. Oh yeah, I forgot to smash them like that. Ah, uh, looks like it's locked. Better pull these things off me. This door, this door. Here we go, I just want to get past all these insect things. Oh god, they keep on nabbing me and then kill them. Just one of the easiest ways to lose is health, but earnestly, these things are really, really annoying. They, they chunk off your health like crazy, and there's just so many of them, and it's like, why, why am I dealing with all this shit right now? Now, whatever the case, the music in Homecoming, people say that Kara's kind of losing his taste, touch at this part, but I, I don't agree. Joshua's Robbie the Rabbit doll stuffed in his backpack. For some reason, I don't think I ever got this before, but I got it now. There's a secret quote-unquote ending that you get if you collect all the childhood pictures, but earnestly, it's not worth it. I'm not going to be going for it. I mean, I could technically just add it into the video some other time, but it's not much of anything. Uh, anyways, we're going here. Ooh, dark and mysterious. I ever turn my flash? Nope, my flashlight is on. Everything's just dark as fuck. Okay, now let's see. Let me go straight on down here, and... There we go find possibly one of the more disturbing imageries in this game, which is actually foreshadowing something else. Oh god, this was the part with three nurses. This part is so cheap, it is ridiculous. If they swarm me, they don't seem to be swarming me right now, so actually this is pretty easy. Okay, that turned out a lot easier than I remembered. I just remember there's a part where three nurses swarm me, and that was it. Anyways, though, if we look here, we see that there is a half of a body. This is actually symbolism for something that will happen later in the game, but well, that's kind of a spoiler, I guess. So we'll cut through this. You just don't want to play through if you're not expecting spoilers. Just stay specific like that. I've played this game before, and I kind of want to commentate on things, because earnestly this area does have some good, oh my god, that's important later in the game type things going on for it. Anyways, that this sword cutting noise is supposed to be symbolism for good old Pyramid Head to give you edge as you might recognize it from the movie anyways though it's the other half of the body from downstairs i wonder who put him here who knows but we'll take the good old like because here here's the symbolism here this key this was the doctor that we saw stabbed earlier and he was cut in half by pyramid head hmm. as you can tell because there's a pyramid head sword scraping sound being played right now to make things all edgy Anyway, so we go back down, we're good there, we crawl back around through, was there something new there? Anyways, so though, now with the newfound key, we can get out of here, uh, where was the exit, where's the exit, I, there's the exit. See, it's a padlock, we could never get past it without this key, it's impossible. Yep, without this here key, or without this here key, we would have never made it. It's apparently the Operation Theater Room, because everyone, they, they do exist, but I always thought the idea of having an Operation Theater Room was kind of disturbing in itself. So given that it's a real thing, it's not, it's not as common as I think that most, the most places don't really have, except for like tall end places where you want to teach students. Saying the electric shock machine beyond the seizures, their hold, had, their hold has yielded impressive results in the patients. The most violent and depressed patients are rendered completely docile. The only side effects have been minor memory loss, dislocated bones, one fractured leg, and a patient bit off his tongue. This accident was quite a nice side effect as the particular patient was also one of our noisiest. I've instructed the doctor to doctors to continue with this intensity level for all treatments. Okay, yeah, because obviously that's a real huge doctor role. That's what they should do, right? Ha uh, ha ha, let's make that all dark and grim for the purpose Joshua, of being dark and grim. Is that you? Here's Josh the bitch. Busy. Go away. What are you doing here? I want my toy. Okay, well I don't know why I said that. Well, how did you get here? Are you afraid? Let me ask him if he's afraid. I think I asked you how he got here before. Are you afraid? Aren't you afraid of being here alone? I'm a brave soldier. I'm looking for Robbie. I don't think I can help you. I'm sorry. I don't have any toys for you. Fine, Rob. I want my toy back. I want my toy back. Okay, okay. Where's the last place you saw him? In my room. 
Okay, I'll go see if I can find What? See, where's the logic in that? What my toys? What did you last see in your room? Hmm, okay, sounds legit. Time to adventure halfway across the world. <laughs> you laughing at the lock, John? Oh, fuck, I'm fucking you up, Josh. No, seriously, I would if I had a chance, you fuck. Anyway, so apparently he's the character. He's all mysterious, and you gotta feel sorry for him. He's a bitch. Anyways, so though, we got another save room here. And why not save? Because we always need to save in case anything rapes us. As you even see, apparently this is a nightmare, which is a hint to what this actually is. Huh, I wonder what this beginning sequence that is neither explains nor anything is supposed to be hinting towards. Probably to appeal to the audience who they believe will not get past the video game intro if it full of intense open awesomeness. Okay, what was that? Missing patient bulletin. Room 205, patient went missing. The last seen in the data room after a confrontation with another. The rest of the message is blurred and illegible. Alright, works for me. Breakthrough here. Now this is the hallway where we had the jump scare with the body earlier. As you see, it's no longer there because they instead decided to install fans that lead to the volcanic center of the earth. Seriously, I don't know where all the fire things are. This is just, they only have volcanic themes because that was in the movie. That is literally the only reason. In the movie, at least it made a little bit of sense because it had this theme with the volcanic town. This game makes no sense, it just looks fiery to be fiery. That's, that, that, that's, that's about as much of a death reason you're gonna get. Anyways, so here's the door supposed to go inside. I believe this area has all those insects and... <gasps> Robbie the Rabbit. Because Josh is so gonna want that after it's been in that oozing vagina. No, I mean what? Anyways, so there's lots of little details here. As you see, the baby is like... The baby is gone. Here we go. We're gonna break right through and explore this inside of this area. We reach inside. And what do we find? Uh... QTD! QTD, QTD, QTD. Master the Ape learns win! That's how I like my video games. With that, though, we get the bloody Robbie. Robbie, I almost said rabbit. But anyways, Robbie. So anyways, we got Robbie, who of course has to appear in every game because he is an icon in Silent Hill 3. They are riding on Robbie's success. Robbie's like, I'm a part of an amusement park, but nope, in every other game, I'm a stuffed toy, because I'm a toy every but it's okay, because Josh won't know the difference. Let's gather before the insects can even eat us. Open that. Only get out of here before more of them show up. But anyways, though, we got this fucking toy, so you better be damn pleased that he's such a nice, loving, caring brother who would go to literally hell and back for him. Just got a fucking rabbit. Here you go, Mr. Joshy Poo, your Mr. Robbie Rabbit. Josh. Hey. Okay. Now I'll give I'll give this game a little bit of credit. This scene right here in particular, for some reason, I always thought was one of the better scenes in the game. I don't know why. Here. I want Robbie. Maybe it's the acting mixed with the music, sort of the cinematic angles. This is yours, you remember? Kind of the oddness mixed with the acting, mixed with the music of that scene and the cinematography makes that scene interesting to me. Given it doesn't really have as much of a deep, impartial thing that could have been given with a potential scene like that, like it could hint at so many things. But it, the answer, the whole what happened in this game, why is Alex going through all this, is really stupid, honestly. But it's a good attention to detail. I, that scene in particular I thought was probably the best part of this whole opening sequence. Also, no nice attention to detail. Your Mr. Pyramid Head moving. Walk towards the story will slam. However though, you pay attention. If we stand this I didn't notice this, I believe the first time I played this, maybe I did, but you can hear water. It's not like a harbor. 
harbor sound effects. Not to mention we just picked up a harbor with anchors and water. Again, more symbolism of things to come. However, though, for now, we need to summon the elevator, as obviously this is a brilliant idea. Earnestly, I have come to the conclusion that elevators don't mean nothing good can come out of elevators in Silent Hill. In all my experience in Silent Hill games and elevators, they always lead to terribly bad things. We got the Otherworld Hospital in Silent Hill 1. We have Mary's death in Silent Hill 2's elevator. And then uh, there's even more. Silent Hill downpour, the whole elevator collapses while you're riding it. And metal scraping. And of course, here we have this elevator. What happens to us? A scene again from the Silent Hill movie. Yeah, matching the vinyl makes it faster. And suddenly... Your insides will be spread like butter! Nice little attention to detail, we get the Silent Hill Homecoming opening and have a little nice reference as he's being driven here, well, he's being driven here by the main character of Silent Hill Zero, Travis. Now we're not entering the town of Silent Hill yet, but a nearby town known as Shepherd's Glen. Okay, so again, the useless advice that we'll only need here at this opening sequence, because you know, they're going to be giving us the same advice at the end of the game, won't mean anything then, because we already know all of it. But that's okay, apparently. We tread right into town. Not right. Hometown? You could say that. <laughs> Good luck, soldier. Thanks. I like how with the question is this your hometown? I mean you could say that. Like what what why are you even trying to say about that? It's like, yeah. Thanks for the ride. Wasn't really born here, I guess. But he was really born here, so there's really no point in saying that. This is his hometown. Now given that he can't maybe he's not the most proud of it being his hometown, but it still is his hometown. That doesn't change based on how he feels about it. You can't change where you're born. Anyways, though, here we have a look at Shepherd's Glen, which is actually a lot smaller than you would expect it to be. And they don't really let you explore here much. I believe that you only come here toward at this beginning section and once later. Uh, most of the rest of the game doesn't take place here. It's kind of like your first half of the game area. Uh, anyways, though, as you see, if you try running off into the fog, which of course is the first thing I tried Let's to do last here. time, we'll, we should head yeah, back. we should head back as we walk into fogginess, and then you find yourself suddenly turned around as you walk back onto the road of Silent Hillness. Uh, there's lots of little details, little fences. So you can check all the fences and uh, he'll leave some comments. I've done this all before though, as I said, this playthrough I'm not going to be looking at every little tiny detail given, it's always nice to do that. Here we're going to run into a nice old lady. I mean old, a uh, nice young lady. This place. Alex? <laughs> Judge Holloway. Hey. I didn't know you were home. Does your mother know? She didn't say anything. No, I haven't talked to her. Actually, I haven't really talked to anyone. I'm not planning on sticking around for long. Oh. Well, I hope you get a chance to catch up with Elle. I'm sure she'd love to see you. I've never noticed how messed up her teeth look. <laughs> You're scaring you know me. How it is. No one ever leaves this place. She almost looks like that one uh, jaw guy from uh, 007, James Bond. This town's so cool. Her teeth look similar, at least. It's changed. Mm. Yes. Not for the better, I'm afraid. You should go home. See your mother. Perhaps I'll see you later. This is obviously the mind of a sophisticated mental killer. You look well, by the way. Thanks. The lighting on her eye in that scene was really weird. It kept on making her look like one of her eyes was a lot brighter and just 
sort of spacing out. It, it, I don't know. It, just, it, it struck me the wrong way right then. Uh, anyways, so there's a few things. Here we can look at the central town hall. I'm not sure if we actually enter yet, though. Oh, yeah, they do let you enter right now. That's a bit surprising. Later on, this will play a bigger role. And I think there's no monsters yet. There's monsters that get littered around here later. Uh, don't believe there's any right now, though. Here, it's just a nice little place you can explore. Uh, I believe there's a few items laying around. There's this important newspaper article here that talks about... Uh, I'm not going to read it all right now because it'll last for a while, but it's an important new paper. It talks about Alex when he was younger and how he was saved after being put into a bus. It was a manly man that saved him. He rushed into the water and kept him warm with his own body heat. Really a romantic tale. All you yaoi or whatever fan fiction writers start getting on top of that. I want to read more fan fiction between these two. Okay, uh, anyways, we got the story and blah, blah, blah. I would have read through this, but, you know, second time through and all that. Uh, I believe there's an item in here, too. Here we go. Inside it, we I wasted all these last time I played the game. Uh, you, you can use a D-pad to do auto heals faster, but I always can use the Ron healing now at the wrong time. Those are like a full restore of health, I believe it was. Maybe I'm mistaken on that. We also have a lovely picture of this one Ram dude that will have no explanation given to us, really. Now, there's supposed to be four different big families that live in Shepherd's Glen. I'm from the family Shepherd. That's why my name is Alex Shepherd. And if I was a commander, my name would be Commander Shepherd. Yes, we're going to shut up with those jokes now. Hey, look, there's Judge Holloway in case we want any more narrative with her and prove how much of a freak she is. Hey, freaky woman, what's up with you today? Okay, so you have to be in front of her to talk with her. Works for me. What's up? Hey, Judge Holloway, can I ask you a question? Sure, Alex. What is it? Why is the town empty? Town anniversary? I'm gonna ask, I think I asked why is the town empty last time, so I'm gonna ask town anniversary this time. I noticed a banner out front that said something about an anniversary. Yes. The town's 150 year anniversary. But wasn't that celebration like years ago? This last time. I thought I remembered being here for it. You're right. Things tend to stay in one place around here. <laughs> I guess it's time we took that down, huh? Was that when everything shut down? How's Ellie? Yeah, how is Ellie? How's Elle doing? I haven't seen her in years. Things haven't been that easy for Elle, Alex. She's a strong girl. And I have faith that she'll come through okay. What happened? Does she ask about me? Does she ask about me? Does she ever ask about me? I thought you two were just friends, Alex. We are. We were. And I was just wondering. Yes, Alex. She does. I think she's missed you a lot. Look how static she looked there. I told you. You should go home. <laughs> Kill the bitch. Anyways, so, uh, we'll just leave her for now and go right on back through town. Now, there's something in here. I believe this is the room that had the most items in there or something. Uh, let's see. We got a good old health potion, which, of course, is always useful, especially if you're doing a hard run. Uh, nothing really else to see here. There's a save station, but I'm not going to save yet. There's no reason for me to save here anyway. So it's going to attack me on my way to the next location. The only thing that might screw me over would be a power outage. Well, that's not going to shut power shuts down. Anyways, nothing else to really do here. Well, there is one other thing. There's the central room, and we can read up about all the family history. You see, it talks about the four families in this room. We see all these little paintings, and there's little scriptures about how the four families are all different and important. Uh... I don't think there's really anything else to comment about in here. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. We got a picture of Mom just always talking in our house. And again, if I collected all those pictures, I'd get the best secret clip ending. But to be honest, the endings in Homecoming are probably one of the most, dis out of everything in the game, I thought that was the most disappointing aspect of everything in the game. The final boss is, is fun, but extremely weird. The endings, all of them are pretty bad, including the secret clip you unlock after. It just, in reality, this, that was probably the whole weakest part of Silent Hill Downpour. Not to mention the enemies they introduced at the very end are probably the weakest of all the enemies. Not like physically, just interestingly. They're not that interesting in the first place, and I don't know. Whatever the case, we're going to be going back home, which is, in my personal opinion, one of my favorite locations in this game. Just the concept of a house that's like all. It's kind of creepy on edge. It's an interesting one for me. 
So now we get to one of the core locations of the game, which is our home. It feels strange to be back here again. Not really much else to say about for now. It's our house. It is amazing. Uh, there's a few interesting things that we can do. Uh, eventually we're going to want to crawl over to the park over there, but we're not going to do that yet. We need to open up that garage. That's our main goal right now, and not to mention if we go over this direction, we'll quickly find out that for some reason right in front of our house the world has ended. Makes traffic a bitch. Anyways, out of the case, we just go straight around to our house, because we can't go around, because they have this lame excuse. What's the light? Oh, was it X? Uh, do I have my light right now? No, I do not have a light. I need to get that, don't I? I was wondering why everything was so dark. Uh, wherever the case, what we need to straight on do is go... Oh, we're gonna go meet our mother. Our dear old mom. And our mom is gonna tell us what's been going on. Nope, of course not. Hello? Hello? Huh, that's strange. Our mom is eventually going to come in through here, but she's not here yet. Uh, if we look around, uh, we can see little details that we make comments about things and how they used to be. Uh, he remembers things. Here's a picture of our family. Uh, we got good old dad, good old mom, and there's a picture of Josh. They kind of look like a girl in that picture. Or a deformed monkey. Whichever one comes first. I'm not saying that girls look like deformed monkeys, just particularly Josh here does. Uh, let's see. We got pictures, we got paintings, we got cabinets and whatnot. So we see that we have a basement door, but it is locked. Won't be for long. Whatever the case, we go upstairs to investigate what is going on. Mummy! Mummy! Mom! Mom! You see that there's a door here open at the end. We try to come towards it though, and it quickly closes. It's locked. I need a key to open it. But we won't get a key for quite a long time, actually. Here we find probably the most important room of the house, which is Josh and mine's room, which is where we find the flashlight. The flashlight gives us some narrative. I also love the theme of his house, by the way. God. What's your problem? I... I had a bad dream. Boo-hoo for you. It's nothing. that win the battle America we got all these very stereotypical army things to say wait a minute maybe Alex wants to be in the army we got tanks we got more American flags about joining the fight we got uh, teddy bears with for some reason army cameo I guess that works uh, and here we have a closet we can't go in there right now though not till later of course we got spiders we got voodoo stuff Bookshelf has been busy better days, but there was something special about it. Uh, I don't remember what I'm supposed to do here, but there is a point to this. I believe it was the bo the middle book. I can't back out of this. There we go. There we go. Investigate. There we go, there we go. Let's just move that this way. Move that that way. Ah, oh, button, let's push it. Really hard puzzle, let's move everything to the left. Ah, uh, secret passageway back here. We got a file. It looks like a map of our house drawn in crown. Pretty intense there. See, it's, a, it's our house drawn in crown. Because that's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, though, besides that, there's also a suitcase here. But we don't care what's inside. All we wanted was the crown-drawn map, because that was, of course, the most valuable thing. Here we have a picture of Josh and our dad. Back when he was growing a beard and kind of looked like Barry Burton. Or that one guy who always used to do commercials who died. It's okay if I say a grimdark comment like that, because this is a grimdark game. 
Uh, okay, what does it say? Just a dad of a fish in the lake. Why am I never in these pictures? You're starting to notice, Mr. Alex. For some reason, Alex isn't in any of the house home pictures. Wonder why that is. And here's a tip. The, the real reason isn't nearly as deep as you might hope. It's actually pretty. We'll, we'll find out later. However, though, we have one funny reference right around, I believe it was, I think it was down here, actually. Here it was. Actually, no first cutscene with our dear old mum. Seems like something crawled out of the basement and left a slimy trail. Hmm. Wonder who made that. Seems like they might be staying in the dear old living room. Ah, Mom, you're just excreting slime again. That's okay. Oh, you. Alex. What are you doing here? I just got discharged. You've been gone too long. Yeah. Where is everybody? Where's Josh? I don't know. Your father went to look for him. But now he's gone. Everyone's gone. This is actually a pretty nice touch, in my opinion. Because, you know the logic about how you get guns in video games? Usually it makes little sense. But, here, there's kind of a deeper reason for how you get your gun. I miss your brother, Alex. You got this really odd acting character who is supposedly your mother, and and she has this gun. And I think this is actually a fairly good, decent way to, for your character to get their handgun. It's one of the few things that still impresses me about the game. The it's a fairly interesting way to obtain your weapon, your firearm. And it's a reason that makes enough sense in this context. I'll find Joshua. Anyways, besides the fact that she's spacing out like a slug, she might as well, well be turning to a slug like in that movie, what was it called, Yuzumaki? Uh -huh. He's a Mecco. I don't remember his exact name, but I'm sure people know what I'm talking about if they've seen it before. The what Spiral movie, as I like to call it. However, though, there's a weird noise, and she just says, The basement. I'm gonna go look around. You just stay here. Anyways, though, her mom has a lot of interesting things to say. Says me, a small woman. I can't talk to you right now, Alex. I'm tired. Why are you talking to me? Aren't you supposed to be looking for your brother? I can't talk to you right now. I'll ask one more time. I think she has more dialogue than this. I'm tired. I don't know anything else, Alex. I'm sorry. Anyways, now that we've got our flashlight and our gun and our knife, we're all in the good here. Uh, here's another picture of our families. Yep. And then... Just some old desk. Here is our parents' room, which, as we'll see, has been nicely furnished over time. Uh, more pictures. Josh still looks like a deformed monkey in that picture. Seriously, Josh, what the fuck? Anyways, though, uh, let's see. Apparently, all the memories are of Joshua. Josh, 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 what a fucking brat. I mean, seriously. It's a letter from Mom and Dad. She never sent me letters when I was in boot camp. Uh, Adam, I know that you will soon return to me, but I miss you dearly, and Ryan, too, always calms my nerves. Everything here is the same, but with you gone, the house is so empty. Letter ends here. Guess you never sent it. Guess not. We got this pretty useless closet. And in here, we have the bathroom. With nice little pink fuzzy toilets. It's nothing to see here. You got it. Old cassette tape. The label's been ripped off. Well, I wonder what's on it. So we take the cassette tape, because that's obviously very important to the story. Just a little nice additional thing, I suppose. 
Always a struggle to get me in the tub. I hated water. More foreshadowing, because if you might remember, there was water in the prison nightmare section. Hmm, wonder what this could all be hinting towards. Water is one theme, which is here, which is awesome in downpour. I think the reason why there's water in downpour is a bit stupider. So let me think for a second. Why was there a theme about water in downpour? Give me a second, give me a second. Actually, why was there water in downpour, okay? I'm just physically realizing I don't think it was ever fully explained. I mean, it's kind of explained. Okay, that would be the reason downpour why there's water, but it's a really weak reason, honestly. Anyways, though, so, uh, here we go downstairs, and suddenly the basement is flooded. Yeah, I guess both... Yeah, both... Ne never mind. It's just... Um, something's dawning on me that's really stupid. I'll have to complain about that later in this playthrough when we find out more about what's going on. Uh, whatever the case, though, here we have the deep depths of the ocean in our basement. May as well go down there. Obviously nothing bad could happen. Oh, wait a second. What's this here? Something seems to be in the water. And look, the water's rippling effects are completely <laughs> riveting. It almost looks like I'm stepping on jello. Josh, did you flood yourself into this pool of water? Our dad went searching for you, but he didn't even check our own basement. Probably because it's flooded. It just so happens there's a terrible monster who lives in the basement, too. Oh, I forgot to mention that, didn't I, honey? That's what my mom should have told me when I was going in. I was doing the laundry, but we got ourselves a new pet. I like to call him Mr. Sharkman. Why do I call him Mr. Sharkman? Well, you see. <laughs> so anyways, though, we need to get introduced to a new type of monster. This thing immediately is kind of freaky, and I forget how you strategize these things well. You can't just flail on them. You have to dodge them. Being it down, hope I'm doing good. I think he's dead. Anything else in here? Doesn't look like it. Looks like we're good. So anyways, what we're supposed to do is go over here to this. It looks like the remote for our garage is sitting on top of this water pump. What is it doing down here? We got the garage remote, which is cool. There's a note underneath. If it runs out of fuel, use the can from the garage to fill it. Adam. Well, the pump won't start without gas. I should check the garage. That's always nice and dandy. Now anyways though, <clears throat> let's see if I can find it. There's a few little nicks and crannies here in the basement. Nothing too bad though. Now, behind here, I want to keep it alive. Because you can break through this right now. But there's a nice little easter egg if you don't break through it till later. Because you don't have to go there till later. Let me just go up for now though. I'll save that because I didn't see that on my last playthrough. So, Anyways though, we got what we needed. We're going to be like, bye mom! Love you. Such a happy family. Alex, honey. Yep, not she now. just tells us not now, which means that we better go hit on the highway. Riding on the highway. So don't worry, I'm sometimes hover in front of you before attacking. This is the perfect time for a melee strike. Yep, that's how it goes. But if you thought we were done with the one type of monster we've met outside of our nightmares, you're wrong. The whole world has suddenly become darker. Or, never mind, that's just me standing in my house. Anyways, though, what could be under this? Hmm, better go open that basement. Wonder what could open it. It's not like I got something. Garage remote. So we open this up. I remember one of them crawling through there. There we go, now we use it. We open it, and what's inside? Well, what else will we stuff in our garage? The twin brother of that pet we kept in the basement. What else? So we lock on and we knife this son of a bitch. Make sure not to get in front of it, because that's when we'll do this badness. But we're not done yet, because another one... I remember another one crawling through here. I guess I'm just... My memory's mistaken, because I was pretty sure another one of these things crawled through. Maybe that wasn't until later, because we do go back here again. But there's another one that's about to pop up. So we go over this way. Maybe it was here? I remember one of these things crawling out from under one of these little things that you duck under. It was my memory is just incohesive with what's actually going on. Anyways, though, we apparently this park is haunted. As you see, the fucking <coughs> ponies. Ponies, ponies, ponies everywhere! Fucking new old newspaper, don't matter. 
Now, uh, there's a few little details here because this park is very important to the secret narrative of the game. There's actually, for some reason, this park right here has more clues about elements about the game. If you don't examine, for some reason, they never pop up ever again in the whole entire game. There's a few elements about this park right here that if you miss it, you will never understand some of the rest of the story, which I thought was really kind of stupid in retrospective that if I had missed some of the extra stuff around this one area of the game that has absolutely no importance to anything except that you run through it like once or twice, then you miss so much of the narrative of some of the reason behind things. First one is this picture. A big spider crawling next to my army toys in the park. And there's a reason why this picture of a spider is important. It's one of the only mentions that we'll ever get of a spider. I believe there's another one, but... Uh, you see there's a theme about a spider later. I'll just say that much. And there's also a picture. Where, where, where was the picture? I need to remember. Uh, there's a clipping and a newspaper, both of which are kind of important. Uh, was it this newspaper that had it? There we go. Paul Russell Douglas was executed for the murder of eight children in and around Silent Hill and Shepherd's Glen areas, according to court records. He offered no resistance as he was arrested and strapped into the electric chair as officials, witnesses, and reporters watched. This execution is not going to stop anything, Douglas said. I've worked and waited for this day. All that's left is to rejoin my lord. After preparations were completed, Douglas received a sudden blast of electrical current, followed by a two-minute scream that jolted him back into the chair. Medical officials pronounced him dead at 2.09 p.m. Anyways, though, there's one more thing. Oh, is that it? Is that, I think that's it. I think that's it. No, wait, no, this isn't the exact one. We have a picture of a child saying, all by themselves on a swing set, which is obviously drawn by Joshua, because he's the only one who draws anything in this town. And apparently he sticks his drawings all around town. Also, his drawings are going to get progressively darker as we get further into the game. Look forward to it. Oh, yeah, we need, we need the pipe. That's why we need to go to the garage, because there was a pipe in there. We weren't just opening it to free our pet. That's right. Ha ha. Silly of me. Silly of me. Because why, why would I think that all we needed to do here was open up the garage just for the sake of opening the garage? Maybe the other monster will attack me once I get my pipe. I think that might have been it. Ah, I wonder what this is back here. I can't pry this open with this weapon, so I better go get my pipe. Fast drawn attacks, charge attacks, and combos. When in combat stats, press A for fax actions and X for strong. Yeah, I keep on forgetting this game has strong attacks. Uh, strong attacks can be charged up for additional damage for holding down X. Expensive fast attacks followed by strong attack and make for interrupted strikes known as combos. I always forget that this game does have this ability. It's a little ability of this game which has passed me up many, many times. Here we go, here's we go. There's the pipe. Got the steel pipe. Now what do we do? We equip the steel pipe, just for now. We pry this open. It involves us mashing the A button to win. Pretty fun, if I do say so myself, which gets us the empty gas can. And now, for getting ready, because it doesn't matter if I use the pipe. I think this is when the monster crawls out. Yep, I was right. My memory was correct. So that thing's dead. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. Now that we got both of the things that we need to actually do what we need to do, we run right on back home. And over here, we're able to finish up what we came here to do. And I better equip the pipe now. Hey, look, a pipe. Better equip that, because it's the only way I can open this gate. Pry, 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 pry. Mash A to win. Pretty cool game. However, though, we're not done yet. We're done with the pipe for now. The pipe isn't nearly as effective as this. There it is. See, that monster was obviously just waiting for his chance. Years and years. Oh, fuck that, if I am. Just hanging around like a fucking boy. Okay, he's dead. Oh, the wicked guy's dead. Now, there's a thing that we can climb to get up here, but there's really no reason to climb up here. You just climb up here, and you're like, well, this is a view of a brick wall that I couldn't get otherwise. And look, there's a truck. Ah, uh, well, I guess that's all I needed to see. 
and then nothing. I, I don't even believe this area ever gets a real purpose in the game. Maybe I, maybe there was like one thing hidden there. I, I don't even remember. And so what we're supposed to do is go over here. We examine this and we see the gas tank is open. Looks like it was, uh, yep. Well, it means that we can take out our gas tank, which means that we can get the empty gas tank <gasps> to be full. Guess what we're supposed to do with the gas? We're supposed to generate the thing to make sure our bus, uh, busman, our basement isn't flooded. You know, our busment. That's what we, that's what we keep our buses in. Random scream. I don't remember that, but whatever. Doesn't make a big difference, really. Our house is hiding a dirty little secret. We keep gray monsters in our good old garage and basement. I call them Larry and Peter. Larry and Peter get along very nicely. That's why there are gray monsters that we keep in our basement and also in our garage. They don't have legs. They just kind of waddle around. They have razor sharp claws. All they do all day is waddle, waddle, waddle. It's so cute. Waddling things are cute. It is a proven fact. If it waddles, it's cute. Anyways, we go right down into the basement. And look, it's all flooded still. Pretty cool. I like to get my feet wet. If you know what I know, I don't really mean anything by that. Uh, here we go. We like, hmm, better fill it up with that there gas can. Because that's the only way to solve this puzzle. Can't open the door if it's flooded. So then we deflood the basement because this works like, like magic. And clearly, it defloods the basement in like, what, 10 seconds? Because, of course, a basement that flood would be deflooded in the, this span of time. Look how fast it goes down. Okay, maybe we're like 15, 20. But the point is, that's way too fast. It does nothing desaturizes itself like that so quickly. Anyways, now we can open the door, which is what we've been just wanting to do since how long ago? Because we couldn't have reached down and pulled that out earlier, and you can't open doors in water either. Seriously, there's no good reason why we couldn't have gone through this earlier, except that they want us to have a long way around, because everything in survival horror games has to be complicated. Yep, that's how it rolls, that's how it goes. So we climb up the staircase, and we hear suddenly... Nope, wait, wait. I need to look at it. I need to look at it before I go in the head. Hey, where's the dog? You look in there and then you walk forward. And suddenly dog noises. Yes, this is dog. As if to tell you that. You hear all these noises, but they really don't mean anything. You have another child's drawing. It's a lone child with all these children under buried under the ground. I wonder what this is supposed to symbolize and represent. Ah, uh, it's a deep mystery to everyone except people who have already completed this game or probably have a good idea what might be going on here. Alright, so uh, besides that, we go right back into our house because that's exactly what we came here to do. For some reason, the mother locks herself out of the kitchen. I guess she decided now that her husband and family was gone, she was never going to go back in here. No one could tell her to get back in the kitchen because it's locked away. Her womanly temptations will keep her from getting in there because apparently instead she wants to go into the basement and slither around like a fucking slug. I, I don't care. I mean, my mom does what she does. Answering machine. There's a tape inside, which means that we can listen to this. And this, I think, was one of the better aspects of the game, too. This was the part that kind of stuck out to me for a few reasons. It's a good explanation of Alex's character to this point. And sort of gives you a better idea of what's going on with him in this house. Let's listen. bit more of a hint about what's going on around here but whatever the case uh, we're not gonna listen to it again unfortunately I, I sometimes accidentally press a and just go right back to what we just saw 
In here, uh, we had some suing stuff. Apparently, my, well, one of Mom's favorite things to do was to sue stuff. And it was the, uh, nothing really in here that I recall. I think it's just really narrative. Uh, let's see, was there anything in here? I don't think so. Yep, I believe that might have been it. Was there anything on the table? Nope, this room was just for narrative purposes. Just to have a room. And I don't believe there was anything else much in the kitchen. Maybe it was something in the fridge. What's in the fridge? A health drink. That was what was in the fridge, because apparently that's where we keep our health drinks. Good to know I'm still hoarding up on this shit. Okay, so anyways, that's all that. Lock's broken. Looks like I can't open it. Not gonna open the fridge again, though, so I think we're... Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Yeah, we don't have anything to hack through that yet, so we don't really have much of a purpose to go in there. We'll just go back out the way we came. Not really much of a reason to stay at home now, so now the only option really to do is to go into the graveyard. Now, in the graveyard, there's a lot of graves to read, but I read them all last time, so I'm just going to skim right through this part this time. I'm not going to take my time to read every single grave. Those things go on for a while. It kind of makes me think about those Walt Disney tomb things. I don't know why, because it's just all these really silly descriptions about things. Anyways, though, what's this on the fence? This is Joshua's backpack. There's a photo inside. This looks like a picture of Dad's sign room, but how did Joshua get in there? And for some reason, he skinned the dog. Guess we were running out of money for meat this winter and just didn't have much of an option. Anyways, though, what we will find out is that that picture is representative of what type of enemy we're going to be meeting in the graveyard. And what's that, you say? I like to call them puppies, but you might like to call them what the hell is that skinless creature running right at me? It's right behind us, to be exact. In fact, I'm going to go encounter this one while I'm alone, because these creatures can be a bother later. Oh, wait. Wait, wait. Was it actually behind? Nope. Forgot they aren't actually here. Uh, they will appear in the near future, though. We can hear the wind of the corner of Silent Hill, because obviously there's nothing in the abyss, and apparently Alex has no questions about that. As most Silent Hill characters, besides a few, don't seem to question the reason and logic behind that. Uh, here we go. This area right here will be important later. Uh, it's, it's, it's locked. It's, even though we opened the gate just like this earlier with a pipe, apparently this one's locked, and this will, this will be important later, but for now, nope. Here we have to go inside the graveyard. Got all these graves, and another note. Got Rose Heights Cemetery map. Okay, it's just a map. Uh, as you see, this is what we're going to be running through. Uh, I'm gonna probably stop off around here only because this is where the game starts going more into a different direction. So, this is essentially the end of the tutorial scenario and now going more into the actual game game. Where's the save point though? I'll just go until I find a save point. Yeah, I'm not reading all that. There's all these, you see there's all these stains all over the place, but there's no time. I mean, there's time, but I'm not gonna take the time to read them all this time. Uh, as you see, there's all, there's lots of them. There's literally a lot of them. There's a reason why there's so many nameless tombs and all that. This is kind of important to some of the narrative, not what the actual gravestones say, just the general area. And there we have apparently the mayor of the town. What's that guy doing? Oh, I forgot. We, that's kind of a spoiler. He's kind of just digging. Why is that guy digging up graves? He could be digging up graves for a number of reasons, Mr. Alex. However, though, he's not of a concern of us yet. We need to do is jump down here and get mauled by dogs. Which, what do you need to introduce a new monster? Cutscenes. Let's not introduce them in gameplay where the player has no idea of how to reckon with them or get prepared. Seriously, I don't know why so many games like to introduce monsters with cutscenes. Sure, it's cinematic, but if you're playing in a horror game, it really takes away from the appeal of the actual monsters, in my experience. Monsters with flow with gameplay are a lot more effective in horror games than monsters that are introduced through cinematic cutscenes like this. I can give so many examples of monsters that I remember a lot more simply because they were actually introduced through gameplay as opposed to cutscenes. Anyway, oh! that was a fast response. Oh no! This is so cheap! Okay, so before I die from a fucking puppy, uh, Serum, I guess I got health drinks, I use this. Just like every enemy, if you can knife it fast enough, it'll die. It'll bleed. 
Uh, over here we have, uh, this fortune is thereby dedicated to the memory of Charlotte Borden and her loving parents. Taken suddenly from a life yet fulfilled, born the rest is legible. Eight years old, yep, anyways though, uh, yep. Two halves divided, we take this, and I actually missed this the first time. Like, I had to go all the way back just to collect that slab, which was annoying, but I did it. You would think you have to climb the vines, but nope, you're just supposed to climb right up here. Just as important, apparently, even though there's no visual cue to why that would be more important than anything else. Uh, besides that, just a lot of stuff everywhere. Was this the path? That, yeah, that, that's the path we're supposed to take, so I'm just going to look over here for a second. Uh, we're going to have to come back here in a little bit. Somewhat important to the narrative of the game again. Oh, health drink. I'll take some of that, if don't mind if I do. Whatever the case, we're going to be heading right on back to whence we came. This is where they're going to start throwing all the monsters at us and the voodoo. I believe a lot of them don't start popping up until you make your way back, though. Essentially, the area of this area is to find your path through all these open tombstones. Uh, there's a save station. I think I might finish the graveyard only because I think I can get through a lot faster than I think I can. But I will save just in case I change my mind on that. Yep, save the game. I believe... Oh, I didn't save since the nightmare. That's kind of interesting. I thought I had saved before then. Haha, <laughs> that would have been a lot of backtracking. Whatever the case, we did save over that now, though. Uh, there's all these graves we can read, but what we're supposed to do, we'll find out if this door is open. Okay, I guess I was wrong about my memory. Uh, well, you can read all these, but there's only really one or two graves that we need to find. We need to find little holes to squeeze through. There we go. Found one of them. You need to find the holes to squeeze through. You might want to remember your path through here because it can be pretty useful. Uh, your map can be incredibly useful during this part. I remember that also. As we can see, that's not full. Well, that is. And which one was it? Okay, so health drink in here, which means this probably is not the right direction. That means this one probably is. Okay, so we squeeze right through there. As you can hear, the doggies are coming up. Uh, for, will they make a circle around again? Probably. They like to make us take advantage of all the rows of death. Uh, nope, not here. So it must mean it's up ahead, maybe? There we go, I see what we're supposed to do already. Because this door will be locked. Is there anything else in here before we head on back? This isn't a very hard to remember trail. For some reason, I remember it being hard to remember than this. But anyways, there's going to be a lot of dogs over here. I better just take care of them before they come and maul me to death. Or I guess they're not here yet. There they are! Okay, that didn't make me jump. I'll admit that. And the dogs, and knife the puppy to death. There we go, puppy down. Easy enough, even on hard difficulty. Anyways, though, we go right through here. We jump into this pit, which is obviously a fantastic idea. Lots of cockroaches just enjoying their times so here. We crawl right on under. What else are we going to have? Uh, nothing. We're just going to climb on up. I believe this is when another dog pops up. Wait, no, wait. No, I know this area. This is the really, really big area that has a few enemies. You can run right through the center because there's dogs and all that in there, but I'm just going to run around because it's... Actually, nope. You know, maybe there's something in the middle. I forget. Or the case, there's a dog in the center here eating. He's like, whoa! Whoa, Nelly! You dodge the bite and then dodge around again. Easy enough, honestly. The enemies in this game really aren't a challenge once you get their patterns down. They're all actually pretty piss easy. This again is important. Uh, we're supposed to open it somehow with voodoo magic or something like the sort. Uh, I believe there's another slab around someplace. At least there's some healing items around here. We have a good old health drink that we can pick up. Just never know when we might need one of them. There's lots of graves you can read and all that. But again, I've read them all before. Uh, right on through here is where we're supposed to be going. We're actually almost out of the graveyard. We just break right through here. There's a few more extra things to do. It doesn't matter which direction you go here. They both lead to the same place. There's a different scripture to read if you really want to read all the scriptures. Uh, now to the back of the graveyard. No, oh, this wasn't it. Okay, there's one of these graves. Are, there's a few different yards here. Remember, one of them is important. Here's the other half of this tablet that we need to get out here. Uh, anyways, the weed separatable. This is all representing me and Josh, because apparently he and I are unseparable for whatever reason. Was this the open graveyard? Uh, yes, this is the open one. I forget what was the reason of this. I just remember there was a reason I like coming here. But I can't feel like me remember what it is right now. I guess it's just open to be open. Ha 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 ha. 
Now with both halves of the graves and all that, we can go over here and open this here right there up. It's locked by the mechanism. Looks like something circular would open it. Hmm, wonder what circular things we have. Odd stone plate and strange stone plate. Odd and strange, apparently completely different things. It opens the door and we can continue. There's a dog out here, I remember that too. Oh, it was out in the parking lot, that was it. Or maybe it wasn't in the parking lot yet. Though I do remember you get attacked in this parking lot by dogs. Maybe I just ran away from dogs and they chased me. Uh, anyways, the one that's be towed away. Don't care, don't know, Alex. The town doesn't give a shit, apparently. So now we run right out of the graveyard and just continue on the road. Well, we're about to meet a new face. Well, not a new new face for Alex, but a new face for us, the player. Though we might know who this face is if you've been paying attention enough to the narrative. Hmm, lamps, end of the road stuff? Sounds legit. However, what's up here before I go on? I forget if there's any items in front of the police department. Those roots, apparently I can walk over them, which is a rare occurrence. Got police cars, nothing moved in a long time. Oh, wait, there's one thing. First aid kit, because you never know when you might need one. Alright, then I believe that might be it for this way. I believe that there's another route this way that we won't need to take quite yet. Yep, it's going to be blocked by a... <gasps> it appears to be one that doesn't like these dogs. Yeah, yep. And that's a sort of a hint again, another foreshadowing element. Okay, I'll give the game credit. It does have a lot of foreshadowing elements. But given, it doesn't really foreshadow to anything super interesting, which is kind of the flaw with... There we go, there she is. Of course, we start off meeting this character with an ass shot. What else do we expect from female video game characters and these type of developer type things? Uh, seriously, why is there such a focus on those? Anyways, though, we go on with the narrative here. This is L. You always were a klutz. You okay? Alex? Oh my god, Alex! Yep, totally just friends. Hey, L. Your mom told me I might see you around here. Oh my god, it's so good to see you. It feels like it's been forever. Forever and a half. Yeah. You alone out here? Well, hey, you know, I didn't think I'd ever see you again. You took off without saying So I got married. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not here for long. I'm looking for my brother. You seen him? No. Radio. What's on this radio? What's up if I hear anything, I'll with this you know. radio? Thanks, so. Alex. I hope you find what you're looking for. And with that, we get the walkie-talkie finally, and then we talk to her. I'm busy. Can't you see? A lame excuse to why to keep her busy. Now she even seems annoyed at me. Now over here we have the Bartlett Vineyard. It sounds like it'd be a very interesting location, but like everything else in Silent Hill, the bridge is destroyed. Oh, and also over here you'll find that we have another end of the world. Which we can't walk into, but whatever. Narrative reasons. Ha ha ha, we couldn't design over there because the road ends. 
the plot convenience of Silent Hill, but where the road ends where you want. Because in the old Silent Hill games, they used to have purpose and meaning. It was kind of like it was leading you across a path. But now, these days, I literally swear they just throw in roads just to be kind of obstacles to make you go the long way around. Given in the old games, mechanically, that's what they would do. But there's kind of a narrative purpose to why they put you through locations. But these days, it's just random locations that you go to for whatever reason. But whatever the narrative needs you to go to, really. Over here, I believe there's another end of the road after we visit a parking garage. Wait, no, this is where it gets all foggy and sends you backwards. That's right. Need to have take effect of that fog thing once more, at least. Anyways, though, uh, besides that, we're supposed to actually go inside here, this little rundown barnyard looking thing, which is a bridge. Which, I honestly, it's a nice change of pace. It looks kind of cool going through there. Don't see many of those type of bridges these days, and I've always been kind of a fan of them, so some affinity there for it. We just go on right straight in through this door, which means that we cannot go in because of violators. We go in anyway, which means we're clearly a violator, but that's okay, because given who gives a shit in this town anymore. Apparently no one else does, because the town is messy as hell. Anyway, some enemies to encounter, things to enjoy. Looks like Curtis has stripped the unusable parts of the other. And since we don't know anything about Curtis, it's probably like, what the fuck? He's the mechanic here, or the junk man. Kind of important to the narrative, just a little bit. We'll get more into him later, because he's just kind of important, not really important. That's kind of his role in this. Anyways, with all these signs that he collects lots of junk and jank everywhere. Oh uh, look, let's stuff that car full of shit. That sounds pretty cool. Might add to my collection of rest of the shit I keep around this place. Yeah, I'm being kind of hard on him here. Another stack pile of gasoline barrels. Really, what does he need all those gas barrels for? There's no good reason. That's never really explained. I guess maybe just one day he either planned to A, fill up a really ton, a large amount of cars, sure got a lot of them, or B, he plans to blow up this place someday, which might be a, quite a spectacle. Kind of, hard, kind of entertaining to explain, too, why the whole place just went up in flames. However the case, we just go onward, and look, it's a light at the end of the tunnel, which means that we'll go straight in and explore, where we have another narrative section, where we explain the depth and secrets of this town. Hello? You're Curtis. How's it going? I'll be saying you're Curtis. Hey, you're Curtis, right? <laughs> Hello? How's it going? I'm happy I asked that first. Hello? Hello? Can I ask you something? I'm busy. How's it going? Hey, man. How's it going? <laughs> Maybe this will interest you. I know you. Sheriff's kid. Alex. Right. Military man now, I see. I'm pretty sure it's broken. What do you think? Hmm. I think you must have stole this from your daddy. Just tell me if you can fix it. person that tells me what to do is me. Got it? Hmm. Pretty neglected. It's a damn shame the way people mistreat such nice things. Look, what I really need is some information. Have you seen my brother Joshua? You want to talk to the mayor. He knows everybody's business. Mayor Bartlett? You know where I can find him? Sure. Same place he is every day. Digging up people's graves. You know, there's something seriously wrong with that guy. You know? Like in the head. That's Mayor Bartlett? Under all the streets are broken. Nobody around here gives a shit anymore. Yeah, I could fix it. Might take a little while though. By a little while, it means go to the next room and spare some time. It's yours. What's the catch? Consider it payment for your help. Nah. So 
Soldiers gotta have a gun. Thanks. Yeah. I like a fair trade. I'd have to ask some friends of mine who are more savvy with guns if that was a fair trade or not, because I don't know anything about weapons. And I don't care to know, but I do know that some people have a high interest in them, and for them, eh, but that's okay. Know a few of them, so he's gonna tell me to bug off now. I know we had an actually rather pleasant conversation, in my opinion. Hey, man, one more question. Can I have that shotgun? Why are you still here? I'll ask the shotgun question, because I believe I asked him why he was still here last time. How about I take that shotgun off your hands? Yeah, how about if I slap you and kill you, huh? You looking for a weapon? Take a look around the place. I'm sure you'll find something else you could use. Yes, sir. What's with all the clocks? That was the... I mean, it's like it's such a pleasant conversation. We're just driven up by that. Uh, why do I slap you and kill you? What the fuck? Given it makes sense with his personality, we'll get into that later. You got a lot of clock parts in this place. Is there a reason? Yeah, there's a reason. For fixing clocks! Haven't you noticed that every single clock in this town has stopped at exactly 2.06? No, I hadn't. But then take a look around, son. Can you fix them? Have you ever tried fixing them? Kid. I can fix just about anything you put in front of me, but I've never seen anything like this. There's no reason they're not working. It's like there's something causing it. What? Well, that's what you're trying to figure, now isn't it? I'm just trying to find my brother. Now, you might want to think about opening your eyes to everything else that's going on around here. You might find it'll lead you to where you want to go. Hey, I can't talk right now. Can't you see I'm busy? You're still here? Why don't you leave me alone, hmm? I'm tired. I just want to be left alone. Alone, alone, alone. And with that, we can go into the back a little bit. I think he has an item. Here we go. Yep. Pistol ammunition, because that's what we need. Rubber gloves, boots. We have another save station here. Missing persons, we replace missing persons with more missing persons. Because we're looking for our missing Joshua. Wait, 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 there's something to investigate. Here we go. The health drink. We're just still hoarding those things. We will probably need them in a little bit. And the junkyard map, which is, of course, very extensive because we need to know exactly where we want to go. You might notice that there's a door that was right next to the door that we were just at. Because we can use this as a shortcut to get out of here. However, though, this is almost the point I want to call off the first part. We made a lot of progress comparatively. Uh, where was the exit out of here? Oh, there it was. I was going to say, there might be one or two more things I do before I call it off for now. But let me just check first of all. I, was trying. I remember there being a monster under here, but I don't think... Yeah, there we go. Now it's here. I might as well not even dodge. This thing is attacking me more than me. I'm dodging it, so. Oh, uh, well, whatever the case, I'll just let that thing slide and we'll head right on back. I like how there's the do not enter sign on the way out of here, because that's a nice little touch. Do not enter the rest of the world. Oh, yeah. Then again, the rest of Shepherd's Glen is pretty hellhole ish. Anyways, though, now, of course, hmm, wonder what we can do now. I just got a gun out where there was nowhere else I saw I'm supposed to go, so how will I transgress the next area? What could possibly move this narrative forward? I know, a random cutscene showing us how we get to the next place with no real reason or, like, explanation. Hello? Alex Shepard. Hello? Hello? I 
I was always terrible at fighting these monsters. I'm not even going to try and fight them right now. They take off a lot of health, they have a lot of health, and I've never really understood their patterns. So I, they're easy enough to skip, so there's not a good reason to face them anyway. Uh, here we go, running away from one, though. Uh, anyways, though, that was a good explanation how to go forward. So where are we supposed to be headed now that we're getting chased by monsters everywhere? Well, nothing yet. We're actually supposed to first talk to the bear. While we avoid puppies. I was hoping that would trick the dog enough so I could buy. It did actually work. Never mind, it didn't work. Ah! You know, that's a good enough place to stop off. That was Silent Hill Homecoming. I'll catch you guys next time.